part two about the boy across the street who used to stalk me. So like I said, I saw him watching me outside his window, but I didn't want to overthink it, so I was just like, no, maybe he's looking at something else. Well, this all started a month after I moved in. Well, it started happening more frequently, so then I told his older brother. We're just going to call the younger brother Mac. So he talked to Mac, and then everything was fine for a week. Just a little information real quick. For the public school, the bus would arrive at 740. My private school started at 7 o'clock. So my mom would come and get me at 615 because my school was kind of far away. So like I said, it was a week later. Every morning that I would go outside to wait for my mom, Mac would be standing on his porch watching me. Oh, but it gets worse. So one night I was in my bedroom, right? And this is like some scary movie shit. I kept seeing something run past my window. My bedroom was on the first floor. So I told my dad about it and he put cameras outside. Well, Mac's older brother told me that Mac was always interested in my life. So me being a smart ass bitch, I told his older brother that our cameras didn't work like for part three. Part three about the boy that lived across the street who used to stalk me. So like I said, I told his older brother that our cameras didn't work anymore. Knowing that he would tell Mac. Because he had it in his head for some reason that Mac wasn't obsessed with me. And the reason why I told him our cameras didn't work was because Mac was watching while the cameras were being set up outside. And after that, everything stopped. Except he would still be outside every single morning on his fucking porch watching me. So the one night while I'm sleeping, I wake up to some noise right outside my window. And my bed was on the same wall as the window. So I could see who was right outside my window, but they couldn't see me. Well, I look and guess who the fuck it is. It's Mac trying to get inside of my fucking window. So I quietly call my dad and it's like three in the morning. So I tell my dad what's going on. So he goes outside and nobody's there. Well, the next day we check the cameras. There's footage of him jerking off outside my window, trying to break into my room with a fucking crowbar. Luckily, I was staying at a friend's that night, taking pictures of me outside my window. So we showed his parents. Then we moved and they sent him to a mental hospital. Story time about the boy across the street who used to stalk me. So a little background information. My parents and I moved into a new house that was literally five minutes from where I used to live. But I went to private school, and almost all the other kids in my town went to the public school. So I didn't really know a lot of the kids in my town. Well, a week after we moved in, our neighbors across the street invited us to a barbecue. While we were there, I started talking to our neighbor's older son. And him and I started to get along really well. Like, in a flirty way. <laughs> their older son was a senior, I was a sophomore, and their younger son was a freshman. Well, I kind of talked to the younger son, but he was just, like, giving me really weird vibes. So for the next few weeks, I started hanging out with their older son a lot, and we would talk all the time. Well, the one day whenever I went over their house, it was super weird. His younger brother kept saying, oh, I think I know you from somewhere. Like, I swear I know you. And I'm just like, okay. Well, the one morning I was waiting outside for my mom to pick me up, because she worked night shifts and she would just grab me and then take me to my school. And I saw him in his window watching me, like, for part two. Hospital. Story time part two. I almost got arrested after sneaking into an abandoned hospital. As soon as we realized the cops showed up, we tried to make it to the center of the building. Two of my friends and I were somehow able to make it across the entire hospital and find a back entrance where we were able to hide out for a little bit. We started to work our way around the building to try to get to our car in the front. But as we did that, a cop started walking by, so we had to hide and duck in the grass and trees. We had to get across the street and go through another patch of dirt in order to get back to my car. But the thing is, two of my other friends were still inside with the intoxicated boys. They ended up falling through a hole in the floor and falling down on top of each other in a pile of broken glass in parts of the building. This was like the bottom basement. Somehow they were still able to make it out of there by using the stairs that were completely messed up. By the time that they had gotten out, the cops had went to another part of the broken downtown. So as we were approaching the car, they were running out of the building. We all hop into the car and catch up on what happened. The two girls from inside the building had really bad glass injuries. So we immediately went to the gas station to get first aid. Follow me on my Instagram link below and DM me if you have a story. So this is about the time that I almost got arrested for sneaking into an abandoned hospital. So about an hour away from where I live, there's this abandoned hospital. And me and three other friends had went there previously to do a little photo shoot. But it wasn't until another night that we decided that there was still spots that we hadn't explored in there yet. So we picked up another friend and we stopped by a store and we grabbed some flashlights and drove an hour out to the abandoned house. Pretty much the entire area surrounding the hospital is abandoned too. So there's a bunch of broken down neighborhood houses, a school, a gym, a church all just eerily gone. So we pulled into the parking lot and got out and got all of our stuff ready to explore. And this time we were able to check out the entire thing. Here's a picture of what it looks like during the day. So you can only imagine what this looked like at night. And the whole time we felt like we were being watched. During this, two very intoxicated men show up and they ask if they could join us with our exploring. They were kind of cute, so we said yes. But that's when we saw flashing lights from outside the building. The cops showed up and blocked the entrance. So we knew we were gonna have to make an escape. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram.
Story time of how my mom kicked me out at age 15 because she found out I was dating a mixed boy. So basically, my mom wasn't strict at all, and she let me do almost anything that I wanted. But when it came to dating, it was a whole different story. I mean, she let me start dating at 12 years old, but every single time I told her I had a boyfriend, the first thing that she would say is, he better be white. And she'd always say, if it ain't white, it ain't right. Mind you, my preference was mixed and dark-skinned boys. So of course, I'm going to go after to what I'm attracted to. And at 14, I started dating this kid, and I asked my mom if I could invite my boyfriend to my birthday. We weren't really doing anything big. It was kind of just like a family party with a couple friends. And she said yes. Mind you, she had never met him or seen a picture of him, so she was kind of excited to meet him. So my birthday comes around, and he gets there. And as soon as he walked into the door, I gave him a big hug, and my mom turned around and gave me the most evil look ever. She pulled me aside, and her exact words were, Is this a joke? And she literally said, I trusted you enough to not bring this kind of hood in our house. I'm running out of time like for this part too. Down because I was so pissed. And he kept saying that he cared about me and wanted to keep things the way that they were. So that's why he wasn't telling me. And he says that it wasn't hurting his wife or kids because they didn't know. And that's when I slapped him. And told him that I couldn't believe that he made me into a home wrecker, and I asked him to take me right back home. When I got home, I blocked his number, and then I went on Facebook to look at pictures of his wife and kids. And I thought about reaching out and telling her so many times, but I was so scared that he was going to release pictures of me if he ever found out. None of his friends or coworkers ever said anything, so I'm sure he's just done this a million times. My Insta is below. Follow me and DM me if you have a story.